Hi guys and welcome to a Mike's Positively Technical World video review. This is kind of an unboxing but it's not a real live unboxing. I haven't used this product yet but I was just going to use it for a couple of times and then introduce it just as a standard product. However I used it or tried to use it, put it together and uh, then I thought do you know what I think you might get some um, some handy tips uh, so yeah, welcome to a re-unboxing of the Works WG186E.9. It's a 38 centimeter brushless, cordless, 40 volt, um, all singing, all dancing um, uh, strimmer. Uh, well, sort of strimmer. It's a, a multi-tool really, because uh, as you'll see when we open up the box, um, imagine. Other than that, it's literally it's unused. It's still not done anything. I couldn't really find the original boxes and bits and pieces and packaging because it all just been discarded to one side, but I did still have the original box and some bits of packaging that I found. But um, yeah, it's like I said, it's a 40 volt. Uh, it comes with two four amp batteries, comes with a charger if you get the one with the charger. If the dot nine version doesn't, it's completely bare bones only. Uh, inside the box, you'll find the knurled nut part or the washer, if you like, for putting the rather lethal brush cutter blade on it you also find the drive shaft adapter and uh, the important bits really are this tool this is an allen key with a 10 mil and a 17 mil might be whatever size that is but anyway it's got 10 mil there which you'll need for a construction of the um the tool and then also various bits and pieces here various bits and pieces here i will run through they are quite important bear with on this also in the box you'll find a 25 centimeter diameter double-sided brush cutter blade made by Works, made for or on behalf of Works rather. It's got 6,000 RPM limit on it. And if it goes blunt at any point, you can flip it over and then you get a second, uh, second wind on the blade. So that way if you're using it and you hit something like a rock or a bit of metal or a tree stump and it blunts the blade, you just flip it over and you can carry on running. They're scary as diddly doos, and uh, I personally will not be using that. I'm more interested in it using it as a strimmer, even though it may take a bit more while with it. Inside here, you get the rather large, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's not small in any means. Um, it's the brush guard, so this stops all the uh, rubbish from coming back at you and spitting back in your face. You've also got this side handle, I think it's actually a stability handle, to be honest, when you're running it on idle, which of course doesn't vibrate, so it means it's gonna just sit there. Um, you also have a, a bar strap. This is central bar, so I'm assuming it's on the pivot point. It's works branded, so it always gives me a good, nice thumbs up. Uh, you've got the D handle in the center. It's called a D handle because, well, it, it looks like a D. I suppose we could call it a, a W or it's a M for works upside down, obviously. Self plug, honest. Um, inside here, you find this piece of packaging. It's just a piece of packaging. You don't need it. You then also find the meat end of uh, the first accessory that you will probably get. There's also available a brush cutter, a small chainsaw, and a hedge trimmer adapter. Oh, and a garden edge. I think there's technically four. So you can have this, obviously you can swap the head over um, on this and uh, then you can um, obviously have the strimmer head, but there is actually an actual brush cutter head which features a slightly different guard. You do have to modify the guard on this um, to run it in brush cutter mode. I will go through both modes for you, but I will only be using one because I think a brush cutter is a damn dangerous piece of tool and I think it's a bit unnecessary especially when you've got potential objects underneath it. If you are literally cutting brush only, i.e. brambles and heavily uh, infested area with which you know has got no obstacles in, then by all means use a brush cutter but it is not really designed for be going low level stuff where you might have obstacles that you might want to keep. And then this is, oh, look at it, just look at it. That is pretty much... 80% motor inside there. Um, it's, it's got its own stove cooling fan. It's also got a hook so you can then hang it in your workshop, or your garage, uh, garage, see from the UK, and a five point uh, battery test locator. 
at the top here and also a stand so you can also stand it vertically if you really wish i when you're maintaining it or working on it it will sort of stand vertical like that it's also got an eco button safety button and the user switch which is a palm operated system obviously or you can finger trigger depending on how you want to use it i personally would recommend the using the the, the side of your finger and the trigger the triggers manageable um it's not the softest trigger in the world but it's very positive giving you feedback you are pulling the trigger it also has an eco button obviously you have to fire the streamer up and then push the eco, eco button to in, engage the eco mode uh, it doesn't operate on eco mode as standard uh, it's part of the power share 20 volt battery range which means that you can get two of these 20 volt batteries insert them and then you can use them on a plethora of other tools you can maybe use them on your uh, garden blower uh, your mower whatever you else you've got and uh, to operate it simply when it's put in it'll give you it'll indicate there saying five bars and that one and that one also says five bars and that one there says five bars so it's a lot of spool up time and that's all without anything on the end of it mind you so look it is bare tool at the moment no load she's gnarly she's beastly certain things you can just hear it's like you know, it's like one of those 6.2 liter v8 supercharged engines they have in, out in the states you can just hear they got a lot of power when they're not actually doing a lot just ticking over on idle that is exactly the same this is it claims petrol like power um, i believe they now call it the works nitro range but this is formerly petrol like power which is exactly what it says on the box it is genuinely like a petrol one or gas if you will um i don't think it actually runs on nitro methane so let's get the box out of the way um we will have a look through the instructions as well because the instructions are so i will be your instructions for this okay because i read them and um i glanced over them and you know if you don't read these you're gonna die that sort of stuff okay yeah 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 um trust me there's a few bits and pieces that you want to listen to and i work in health and safety so i was quite concerned when this happened to me so this bottom plate goes on when you're using it with a brush cutter and that is the top plate and it sandwiches it between there very nice but like i said we're not going to be using this brush cutter and that's the nut which obviously uses on the end of there which i believe is 17 mil that tightens up the brush cutter blade i will install it but i'm not going to use it okay the reason why i won't use it is like i said it's damn dangerous i don't really like them i like going home with all my fingers and toes and the area where i specifically want to use it doesn't really warrant that so you're going to put your allen key that's included in the box just making sure in shot and you're going to put it in the bottom head and then this locks the shaft and then we're going to remove the strimmer head the strimmer head has its own washer system and you can see there the lock which i just engaged if you like onto the uh, spline shaft so it rotates around so it rotates around locks into the spline light on the shaft and there we have it that's then locked in um, with regards to the brush cutter blade you simply take the knurled spline standoff washer place it on there I don't think you do a direct replacement you might do you might not i don't think you do or else you lose the ability to lock off the shaft and you don't want that and also then the offset would be too low right and then you take the washer the washer goes 
They're over the top. No, tell a lie. It goes in there. That goes on top there. And then this goes on top of that. And then the washer and nut goes on top here. Then, of course, you've got to bear in mind, it's a left-hand thread, which is why I don't really... Well, it's necessary, unfortunately, to be honest, but it confuses the hell out of me, left-handed threads. Left-handed threads, interestingly, can usually be uh, designated... The nut itself usually has uh, a score mark on it, indicating that it's a left-hand thread. Uh, and then... Righty, loosey, tighty, lefty. Lefty, whatever, you know what I mean. And then you want to make sure you do this up amply tight. If you do not do this up amply tight, you'll have a spinning disc of death. When you fire it up, it will go, and then the motor will break and stop. When the motor breaks and stops, the blade won't. When the blade doesn't stop, it's spinning at approximately, I think it's 8,000 RPM nearly. And, uh, or 6,000 RPM, sorry, 6,000 RPM. And then you are left with a spinning top of doom on the floor. That spinning top of doom on the floor is spinning at 6,000 RPM and could go off at any direction. So yeah, once that's done up, um, remove the key. You should obviously install the guard as well to make sure that you're... Uh, not putting yourself at risk and uh yeah it rotates around and it slices through stuff and that's that's very nice we'll now undo this making sure that we bear in mind that lefty lucy is now tighty lucy tight well, you know what i mean it tightens up if you go left and it undoes if you go right very, very, very counterintuitive. And weirdly, this nut does not actually have indicated markings that it's a left-handed nut. They usually have two strikes down the side of the nut. So industry standard sort of base thing. I suppose it's not industrial, so it doesn't matter. So there you go. This is another part as well. This is where I found out the hard way. So, wrong way to tighten it. So when it's supplied, it's supplied like that, very loose. So just take the point whereby it goes real hard and then go, you're aiming for about another quarter turn. It's probably more like an eighth, but you want it done up firm. If this comes off and then it comes towards you or rolls towards you, it's gonna be a bad day for you. The one that you remember. Okay, moving swiftly on. Hope you found that useful too much of a waste of time. You're going to take your guard, you're going to insert through there. You're going to, ha, huh, he says doing it the wrong way around. Insert through there and rotate this way. Probably trying to do stuff to camera. You get left and right muddled up and also it does it all back to front on the camera. I'm just going to start it off like that. Then, I dare say this is the wrong size. Of course it is. This is only there for locking off the head. The actual usable size is here. And this is a very cumbersome tool, so I'm gonna get my T-driver. Now I've got my T-driver. It's a standard five millimeter H5 size.
I'm just going to give it an extra quarter of a turn with the full length of this. The reason why they give you a longer Allen key, most probably, is so you can do up the extra amount of torque. Um, right, so we've now got the head end. Um, it's worth noting as well. So lots of nerf noting. Um, so the bump function, which is, I think, originally invented by steel. Um, we'll come around. It's got a blade on the inside here. Uh, it's also got a method whereby you can actually detach this outer rib uh, it's quite difficult to do but it involves pulling this part up here uh, whilst was it insert this I think it's insert that's the reason why it's got a hole in mic but um, again it's quite cumbersome inserting this and getting it off the lock at the same time So there you have it so if you want to uh, use the brush cutter blade not with the string with the brush cutter blade you'd use it like this so that way you don't end up endangering yourself with that sharp blade that's what cuts the trim line when you feed it out and it simply slides back on here being careful of course because there's a blade underneath it not to slice your hand open So we're still left with quite a few nuts and bolts. We've already dealt with these. Now this is probably one of the harder parts to do. It certainly was a lot easier taking it off than it was putting it on. So the rotary end here, making sure you can still see it on the camera. We're gonna undo as far as it'll go. Then we're gonna take the D handle, and the D handle, I will just double check exactly which end it should be. So it slopes back towards the user and it should be this way up. So you put all that together and then you basically take this and you'll go, oh dear, it doesn't fit. And it doesn't because you need to kind of pry this open and push it over at the same time. Once it's got in that position, which is where you roughly want it. It'll then easily slide in and lock in exactly where it should be in the right direction. If you do this wrong, at best, it will feel very uncomfortable. Worst case scenario, um, probably just won't fit very well. <laughs> no. Um, and then you can adjust it to where you ever you desire and suit you. Once you're there, you can see that it then stabilizes the tool. Then you want to take this piece here and then I think you remember rightly this slides in this way up like so. Then we take this bolt, this bolt has got a hexagonal head on it, hexagonal head fits in if I do it upside down so that way you can't you can see it correct, fits in like that, bunny that way up. This piece here slides in, get the angle right uh, underneath here, through here. Then eventually should poke out the other side here. For you to then take your 10 mil nut and using standard directions this time, screw it on here. You will then take your 10 mil tool here and go boring, boring, dull, boring, etc. But I'm gonna slightly cheat and because it's right next to me, because I was using it earlier. Um, my 10 mil socket 
which I'd like to point out also is orange and black. I really do a thing for orange and black things. I'm clearly not putting the things in the right direction. Look at that. There we go. Um, when you're attaching the two ends of the shaft, you borrow your extended work table. Just my bandsaw. You then take this shaft here. You'll see it's got the good old fashioned push button, which is, well, it's also got a, I think that's, excuse me, a quarter inch shaft drive. And it's got a female end down there which of course you're going to want to see because it's all the way over there <coughs> you can't really see that, that well and i don't have the option of illuminating it anyway because everything i've got to illuminate is here let me take the you see it down there yeah i think you can see it this is a little cross that basically engages the drive positively and technically uh, into the tool. It's got also got a knurl on the end. I think if you push it in, it auto locks, which it does. Because I think that's actually there to locate it, not to keep it in. Yeah, they think it. Oh yes, I remember this. I remember this very well, as if it was yesterday. It wasn't yesterday, but I still remember it very well. Probably because of the nightmares it caused me. But you can see here, the, uh, the shaft doesn't quite go in far enough. And then how much you try and coax it, it doesn't lock in. So you have to end up having to put it up vertical. And wiggle the head. You kind of didn't see it on camera, but you put it upright and you wiggle the head round and then it locks in. You can then, once it's locked in place, safely do up the drive shaft, making sure that nut is sitting in its cradle on the other side, not half hanging out. You don't need to do it up too tight, just to the point where those two meet make sure that button is hanging out there you now have your fully assembled works wg 186 brush cutter ready for use and uh, without further ado now we've put it all together let's go see how it performs stay tuned okay guys so for the test on the wg 186e I've got a bit of a challenge for it. I say a bit. It's very challenging. I'm sure you agree. Do you want to flip around and have a look? Of course you do. Mm, this is the back of the workshop. It's kind of the void in between my life over here and reality over the other side here. Now, this is actually going to get enclosed and this is going to become part of my wood store. But first, I need to clear it. And as you can see, you've got a lot of brambles here. Unfortunately, I could just go half level with the uh, brush cutter, but I don't know if you can see down here. There's some extruded aluminium down there, and then somewhere in there as well is about seven meters of triangle truss. Triangle truss is quite expensive and have been quite hard to actually source at a reasonable price. So I don't want to destroy it. So therefore, it's going to be string trim trying. String trimmer time. You try saying that, alright? <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, without further ado, safety specs are a must. Oh, yeah! And uh, let's uh, get you guys. 
in. Ooh. Have a nice little look around at the old workshop. Yes, right. Let's just stick you guys there and uh, push the magic button. Oh, yeah. I hope you like the view, guys. You are now pole position view. Best seat in the house to see how this performs. I'm basically now try and maneuver it. <laughs> he says. I have to say, with the extra weight of the camera, it makes the balance quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know how much we'll be able to actually film, but here we go. It's like FPU style for you guys. Turn the lights off. start streaming shall we the stop start things me by the way it's just because I don't want to know it flat out because flat outs like this and I want to run it somewhere around tough stuff. Somebody's run his line out. Oh dear. Pausing. Well, that was one of the more unpleasant things I've had to do in life. Note to self, never try and film YouTube videos whilst doing something really difficult. That's all I do do, isn't it? Yeah. Mike, mate, you'll be absolutely fine. Seriously. Don't fear the brush cutter. Use it. Embrace it. You'll be fine. Trust me. Future Mike tells you you've still got 10 toes. What's the worst that can happen?
Okay guys, there you have it, the works WG186E. Uh, not too bad performance really. I might have found a few stones, a few rocks, had a few sparks. Overall, not too shabby, nothing a bit of the old uh, file can't sort out. Yeah, it'll be fine, you'll live to fight another day. Um, as for the string, <laughs> yeah, um, string works, but the blade works better, especially on heavy scrub. Um, as for the power of this thing, it's unbelievable. Not once did it turn around to even have a hesitation of lacking power. Um, it just kept on going. It's the, uh, it almost scared me at some points actually. It's that much power. Um, you know, I guess you could liken it to maybe uh, the WG163, which is the standard normal uh, uh, strimmer, being like a, a thousand pound bomb. It's adequate. It's all right. It does the job. This, this is this is the uh, the big one. This is the uh, yeah, the Saar Bomba. She's beautiful. Um, yeah, I really can't praise it enough. Uh, it says gas light power, petrol light power, and I think it's actually more powerful because it's electric. It delivers more torque, and it doesn't suffer from much from RPM lag. With a petrol, you're constantly going and building it up. With this, it's just power and torque purely there all the time. Having said that, I dare say that it's come at a slight cost to the batteries, which are only on three bars. Three bars, though, to cover all of that. It wasn't light duty at all. It's quite heavy duty, in my opinion, what I just cut through. Um, you know, it's, it's done well for itself. Uh, some of the thicker stuff down the bottom there was nearly the size of my thumb. Um, and yeah, it's taken out. I've now got to pull some of the more large and more intricate bits that have grown into my workshop through the outside bit, uh, through with a pair of hex armor gloves, so that way I don't get thorns in me. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with it. Um, it's definitely a 10 out of 10 product. If you need a multi-purpose tool, this before I've even used the pole saw, and it comes with a 10-inch pole saw. It doesn't come with, you can have an optional 10-inch pole saw and a hedge trimmer as well, as well as the dedicated brush cutter head. Uh, there are three accessories you can also add to it. Um, yeah, it's it's a beast. It's a top of the line piece of kit for uh, not be fine thing for the same what money you pay for obviously a petrol equivalent. It's electric. Batteries, cool as an ice cube. Uh, the head, the knuckle, is assumably warm to the touch. I'd probably say some of the region around about 35 to 36 degrees. It's sort of it's nice. So somewhere near body temperature. And uh, yeah, I can't really say much more to it. Eco mode is pretty good. Uh, that gives it almost like a petrol like feel rather than being electric. So it's rather uh, when you hit something, it sort of does slow down and then gives it a bit more oomph, slightly less. Uh, I can't really say I mentioned I've noticed much difference when using uh, the eco mode on the string trimmer. Uh, and actually, if anything, on the string trimmer, you're trying to ease off the power just because it feels like it's actually got too much oomph and too much. Uh, power and it sometimes actually grabs and bites which is a little bit uh, overkill but then that's how mighty it is uh, real nice well designed well weighted except when you've got camera on it <laughs> um, I like the strap as well that made it nice and uh, easy fatigue free it's very ergonomic uh, yeah I really can't find any major flaws of it it's annoying because normally I do like to point out oh yeah yeah the assembly's a little bit finicky but once you've assembled it once, do you really need to do much more for it? Um, yeah. Oh, and the edger as well. I forgot about the edger. Never forget the edger. Sorry. Anyway, there you go, guys. Uh, these retail, uh, I think they're £184.99 with tool only, and I think they're about £320, £330 with two batteries and a fast charge. I believe that's a dual uh, fast charger. Uh, 3886, possibly, part number for that. Um, it's the dual four amp charger. Um, so it costs two four amp batteries in two hours. There you go, guys. I can't really say a lot. Take care of yourself and I'll see you again in the next video. Oh, and uh, as for the debris, small football, small football, one of these air, all things football further down here there's a basketball 
there's a square foam dice yeah um, more of those air ball things another lightweight play ball another play ball and another one and another and another, and another. yeah there's lots of debris down here um oh and a tennis ball as well um and lots of thorns from going my foot nice uh, <laughs> yeah um that's that guys um yeah if you uh want to subscribe we're going to do a lot more videos this summer some great summer products for the garden some of the more higher end stuff and of course we're going to be looking at some videos on mowers as well soon i really can't wait one of them has just done this lovely oh and there's my truss which i need to avoid and luckily didn't have a single scratch on it they did have quite a lot of debris growing through it so yeah there you go guys the works wg186e mighty little so and so